Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very cool tool inside of ZBrush but I'm also going to be showing you how to incorporate that tool here inside of Maya and that of course is the Slime Bridge tool, a very relatively recent tool that we're going to be exploring in order to get this very cool tendrils right here in our Mind Flayer. It's a very simple tool, it's not going to take long so let's go. So first things first, in order for us to be able to use this a Bridge tool, the, the Slime tool, we need to make sure that we don't have subdivision level so this mind flayer head that we did a couple of uh, weeks ago is uh, it has multiple subdivision levels. So I'm going to go to let's say this subdivision level, maybe this one. 190,000 seems like a good point. I'm going to clone this. I'm going to work on a clone right here, and then we're going to incorporate everything. Now on this clone, I'm going to go to the geometry option. I'm going to delete lower and delete higher so that we don't have any subdivisions. And this is our final mesh. And the tool is super simple to use. It's like the most simple tool ever. You're just going to mask an area where you want to have slime and mask the area where you want that slime to be connecting to. So let's say those two points right there. Once you have that, you just go to the slime bridge and there are a couple of things that we're gonna be modifying. So let me show you what happens with the default settings. With default settings, we get this super weird and super extreme effect. And this is because we have multiple branches, multiple bridges and multiple capillaries. So capillaries are this like little small thingies, like very, very thin effects that are going from branch to branch. Branches are the things that connect the bridges and the bridges are the main effects right there now you can see that there's a little bit of a curvature right here we can try to like play around with it and modify it a little bit but it depends on the normals of the faces that you're masking from so it won't do a straight line it will always try to do this sort of like curved line which again could be useful depending on what you're going for but let's say we want something that's a little bit more um straight we're gonna grab faces that are a little bit closer in their sort of um normal facing angle and as you can see that one gives us a straighter effect between both elements now a very cool thing about the slime brush or the slime function is that all of the elements that we create get their own poly groups so this means that we can very easily mask things out for instance like this and we can use let's say the move brush and just like move this around let's go to the center right there we can arc them a little bit more give them a little bit more fall a little bit more tension we're going to be using dynamics as well a little bit later they're compatible with the dynam dynamics so a lot of very cool things now let's take a look very quickly at some of the uh, settings right here if we go back to our masking here the first thing is tension the more tension we add technically the less like connection we're going to get between the branches so as you can see instead of having this thing go from one point to the other things are tensing so much that they just snap to the to the origin so if we bring this a little bit lower something like this what we should see probably a little bit lower oh wait i don't have uh, another mask over here my bad so there we go so let's add a lot of tension right there and what we should see is things are going to be a lot more straight. If we really bring this up into the tension point, we should see a very, very intense and very straight effect. Not a lot of loose elements. So if you have, let's say, a character with the mouth open and you want to have this very like sharp, clean lines, then bringing the tension up might be a good idea. Otherwise, as we've mentioned before, with a low tension, we're going to have this sort of like curve falling off effect. It's not going to be like super, super, like there's not going to be a lot of gravity, but it's going to be a lot looser, as you can see right here. The bridges are the numbers. Let's bring the branches down and the capillaries down. The bridges are the numbers of main connections and as you can see we set a number of 20 that does not mean that we're going to have 20 that's just the density that it's going to try to assign to that specific area and as you can see in this case we get like what seven eight something like that which again looks very very cool um, another thing here is, of course, if we add branches, the branches are going to connect the bridges. So as you can see, we're going to get some connections between the branches and the bridges. And the capillaries are going to be this like very weird connections between the bridges like that. So depending on what kind of effect you were going to go for, if it's a root, if it's a bane, if it's like something, you're going to have a little bit of this. In my case, I personally like using capillaries and not a lot of branches because branches give you a lot of like very weird uncontrolled effects like this so it looks very random again if this is something that you're going for that that's fine but um i i don't personally like them i really like capillaries because when you add capillaries you get a lot of connection in between the elements i think i went a little bit crazy there but you can see this very like cool organic effect now quick tip if you guys are going to be doing 3d print remember 3d printing has a little bit of an issue with very thin areas so if you have something like this my advice would be to just inflate things a little bit so that you don't have super thin effects and you're probably going to want to dynamesh everything as well so that you got um a watertight geometry now let's go into uh some of the dynamics things that i was uh, mentioning before if you go let's bring the 
the capillary is down. Let's say we want to add one right here and going all the way over here, and we're going to slide bridge. I had extra masks. Just two masks, just two masks, and we slime bridge. There we go. So we get this. That looks interesting. Let's add a little bit of capillaries to connect some of them. There we go. That looks very, very cool. Now, as I was mentioning, if we control and uh, shift on the character, we're going to be able to mask everything except for the capillaries. And one of the things we can do is we can go to the dynamics and literally just run the simulation. And when we run the simulation, these capillaries are going to be falling down as if they were strands of like goo or something. And uh, it's a really, really cool uh, effect. As you can see, I'm stopping them right there. I'm stopping it right there. And uh, we get this. We get this very, very nice effect of the whole capillary, like just being very, very loose. What I would recommend, to be honest, is let's go back a little bit here. Since we want to incorporate that like tension or lack of tension on the dynamics, I would recommend bringing the tension really, really, really high so we get super straight effects then we mask things out and now we go to dynamics and we run the simulation that way we're going to get something that looks a little bit more realistic because the tension points are going to be very very close so let's just wait for this to curve nicely there we go you can hit spacebar and that stops the simulation and look at that amazing goo right there that's what we're looking for that's what we're going now one of the things and this is what we're going to be doing this is not over i'm going to show you how we can bring this into maya and use some special shaders to make this look like actual goo so let me very quickly add a little bit more like of this strands on some other places of the character i'm going to follow the same process i'm going to add two points create a slime bridge with some effects right there mask this thing and then in this case, I'm going to, of course, mask this other guys right here. We're going to dynamics and run the simulation again to let this guys fall a little bit as well. I'm going to wait until we get a very nice, like a round sort of like curved effect. And then spacebar to stop the simulation. Look at that. That looks really, really nice. Let's add another one right here. Go from there to there. This one, I'm not going to simulate. I'm just going to leave it like that. But what we can do is we can isolate this and we can use our move brush just give them a little bit of uh of curvature since they're a lot shorter right we get something like that let's do another one going i don't know from here to here slime bridge there we go and then let's do another one from here to here let's bring the tension down a little bit so that we get a little bit more curvature Let's do, I don't know, from this one right here all the way to the front right here. And we slide bridge again. And this is going to give us a very, very nice effect. And you can add as many as you want. Like in this case, uh, I feel like this might be a little bit too much. But we can add some slimes coming here from the face. I'm definitely going to tension that up a little bit more. There we go. Let's go from here to here. Maybe just a tiny bit less tension. There we go. And with that done, as you can see, we get this very, very nice effect of slimes everywhere. The only thing, the thing that I don't like about this ones is that they are coming from the mesh itself, right? And that's the little issue that we're going to solve right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mesh and I'm actually going to invert the selection and delete everything else. So I'm going to say delete hidden. Now we go back to our initial element. We can go subtool and we can append and we just append at this strands right here. And we should be able to have all of the strands ready to go. And remember, these are subtools, and they're going to pretty much match the exact same thing. So you can see that the insertion point is very, very clean. It really, like, holds to the surface very nicely. If it doesn't, for instance, on this area right here, of course, you can just use your move brush a little bit. But the material that we're going to be using instead of Maya should be... Um, uh, it's going to do a, a good enough job that we're not going to have to to uh, worry too much about this so how could we use this well imagine we're doing again some sort of like sci-fi or fantasy stuff and there's like this pod and there's a lot of like membranes and things you can use this line brush to or this line uh, technique to to generate all of these tendrils do keep in mind that all of these tendrils do increase the poly count quite a bit in this case all of the tendrils are 79,000 points which is like 150 triangles that can be quite uh, heavy if we were doing this for let's say games i would probably use cards and transparency to to deal with this but for cinematics this is in the perfectly perfectly valid way to do it so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna grab the tendrils right here and actually everything else i'm just gonna go here and i'm gonna say let's go to this guy right here because i want to have the, the highest of division i'm gonna hide the tendrils and for this character right here i'm gonna say merge visible to merge this all into a visible uh, character there we go 
And then the tendrils by themselves, I'm just going to export them as they are. Um, I definitely need to clean my desktop. I'm going to do that after I finish this video, I promise. There's going to be mine flayer tendrils. FBX is always a very nice way to export this. And then on the character itself, I do want to decimate because it's a little bit heavy. So I'm going to go to Decimation Master and let's bring this down to 250k. I'm going to get everything out of ZBrush and we're going to jump into Maya to show you how we can give these guys a very, very nice material. Very well. So we're inside of Maya and we, of course, need to bring in our elements. And I actually already have a, um, a scene, a, a render. So I'm going to open the render scene just so that we don't have to do everything again. I don't remember if I skilled this guy. I definitely did. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is uh, change a couple of elements. Let me, first of all, change the HDRI. This one is very, like, burnt. So let's go here and let's use something that's a little bit more traditional, like this one. Perfect. There we go. So what we're going to do, let's uh, get rid of this sphere. Let's get rid of this sphere. And uh, we're going to get rid of actually the character and even the stand. I'm going to go file, import, and we're going to import the mind flare from... Oh, wait a second. I, th I don't think I even exported this. So we're going to import this uh, mind flare merged, which is our main element. And now we're going to immediately import the tendrils as well. The reason why we need to import both at the same time is because now if we want to scale them, we definitely need to scale them at the same time. So I'm going to control G to scale them, and I'm just going to scale them to a normal size. Remember that inside of Maya, the scale usually is one centimeter. So I would expect this head to be quite, quite big, at least like 40 centimeters. So if we grab this cube right here and we change the scale to 40 centimeters or... Oh. Let's go here to 40 centimeters. There we go. That's roughly the size that the head should have. So I'm going to go right around there. This is going to be helpful for a variety of reasons. But the most important one is that we're going to be using a glass shader or something that looks like a glass. And if we don't have real scale, then the glass material is going to behave a little bit weirdly. So let's start with the character right here. I'm going to sign a new material. Actually, I already have a, a material here, the clay material. This is a very basic clay material for the element. And uh, let's, up our, let's set up our camera. I have my camera right here. I'm going to go look through selected. And let's go for a nice like uh, shot right here. Because I want to really appreciate all of the tendrils for my, for my character. Something like this. So if we go to the options, remember that inside of Maya, you have the option to render with GPU if you have a GPU enabled on your computer, and that should give us a little bit of a faster render. Let's give it a shot. There we go. So as you can see, we already have a base material here. It looks like metal tendrils, which are looking quite, quite nice, but this is not what we want. So let's make them look a little bit more like glass. I'm going to select all the tendrils, assign a new material. I'm going to assign an Arnold AI standard surface material. And very important, always keep your things organized. We're going to rename this to M tendrils so that we know that this is the tendrils material we are going to go to transmission and we're going to set the transmission all the way up by doing this automatically the base color the color of the object disappears because a glass object an object that allows light to go through it does not have an inherent color the color is going to be driven by the transmission color over here so if we just leave it like that and we render as you can see we're going to get this not gooey effect but this is definitely looking more like glass how can we make this thing look a little bit more like saliva or like uh, uh this sort of like tendrils and the answer is we need to bring the roughness of the specular down if we bring this roughness down then these guys are going to be way way more shiny and they should look a little bit more intense like this look at that now one thing to keep in mind with a glass and with anything that's transmitted the amount of rays that you're shooting on the scene has a very important impact. This is something that I do frequently when we're doing like a potion or something like that. By default, if you go to um, the Arnold settings over here and we'll go to Arnold and to rate depth, you're going to see that we only have an eight transmission value. What does that mean? Because a lot of people don't understand how all of the settings work. Imagine you have a glass of water, right? And instead of this glass of water, you have modeled your water as well or your wine or whiskey or beer or whatever. When the camera camera shoots the ray, the ray is going to analyze only the first diffuse color, so only the diffuse color that it finds on the first layer, but it's going to analyze as much as eight layers, so this will be one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, six layers, so six layers, or in this case the number eight, allows us to go all the way through the glass and properly analyze the mathematics to get the proper shading. However, imagine that back here we have a mirror and we're going to see the reflection of the glass. 
this means that the ray is going to bounce back and by, by the time it comes back it's not going to have enough ray depth to analyze all of the surfaces so you might get some dark or not as shiny glass as you might want so my advice at least for just a basic um like test is to jump to 4 4 and 16 um diffuse specular and transmission depths and you can see i'm gonna save a, a little picture right here you're gonna see the difference once we render there's gonna be or the glass is gonna look a little bit lighter in certain areas look at that you notice that hopefully you do right there looks like there's more light going through the glass or through the tendrils and again the reason why that is happening is because we got a little bit more power to go through all of them analyze properly and bring back the information into our scene now what other things can we change of course the color right now the color is white and i'm not sure what the color of these things will be but i kind of want to go for like a, this sort of like pale purple so if we change the transmission color, what we're going to have now is this sort of like pale purple color on our tendrils. That, again, looks very, very interesting. That's definitely way too saturated. And then that, that's one thing that you're going to see with glass. Even just a little bit of color is going to like really, really paint your glass. And that might not be exactly what you want. That looks a lot better. Look at that. Beautiful. One more thing that we can play with is the depth. The depth is how, how the transmission is going to go through a volume in the object. If we increase this depth, if we set this to 1, for instance... Let me save an image right here and render. What we're going to see is that now we're not going to have as much or we might have a little bit more or less color because now it's going to try to analyze how deep the volume of the glass is. As you can see, this is definitely taking a little bit longer because it requires a little bit more math to really get this like a, into a proper calculation. So let's give it a little bit of a couple of minutes to get this done. There we go. So as you can see now with a little bit of depth, what's going to happen is the the more or, or the thicker areas, we're going to get a little bit more of the purple color and the thinner areas, things are going to look a little bit less uh, colorful because there's not a lot of depth. The more depth we have, the more like scattered the, the light is going to be. And this is a very similar thing that we see, for instance, if you go to a lake and you go to the very like deep parts of a lake, you're going to see pretty much nothing. But there's, there's so much volume, so much water that it becomes very dark. And on the on the borders of the lake, things are going to be a lot lighter because, uh, well, we have access to um, or we can see less volume, less water. Now, if you want to modify that, of course, we can like bring this down, let's say, to like a 0.5 to reduce a little bit of that effect. And we should have a little bit more pink color along the areas of our character. Now, keep in mind, again, that, that transmission, glass, and anything that plays with this sort of effects, is, is um, it can be a little bit complicated to work with because you definitely need a lot more samples. So be patient with your renders and make sure you add enough samples to get the proper result. And that's pretty much it, my friends. That's uh, that's the the very quick um, uh, overview of how to use and the, the slime bridge tool instead of the new ZBrush and how to implement it on a render for your characters. You can use this for spider webs. You can use this for cobwebs. You can use this for slime and all of these things right here. And of course, the more time you spend working on this in ZBrush, the nicer everything's gonna look. So make sure to create amazing things, my friends. And if you like this video, please leave us a like, share, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, we're really close to our next goal. And uh, don't forget to join us in our discord we have an amazing community we got challenges we got portfolio reviews and a lot of very cool stuff that you can do we also have premium courses so if you want to learn a little bit more about the softwares that we're teaching here in the channel make sure to check the links down here in the description thank you my friends i'll see you back tomorrow